so that was it. it kind of fades out and it's like wow for a, like a movie series that the first two have always ended with on such a high note with Spider-Man like swinging around the rooftops and everything and then he goes into slow motion as he shoots the next web and it fades out yeah, this one. Like Spider Man Three ended on such a such a downer note. Yeah, it's like, are uh, they together or they're not? And I was always like, okay, well, how how does this wrap up? Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if they do anything like I that. Hope they do. I the hope Spider-verse. they do. But yes, speaking of Spooder Man, uh, So Jake Gyllenhaal has finally, finally been confirmed as playing Mysterio in Spider Man Far From Home. Oh, good. After months of the fans already knowing this. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was late. The, the set photos, the fact that Jake Gyllenhaal posted he was on the set, uh, the fact that we've seen him in the Mysterio suit with the big fishbowl helmet yeah, thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we know Jake Gyllenhaal is playing Mysterio. But finally, finally, he comes out with it and says, I'm Mysterio, you guys. And everyone goes, <gasps> yeah, we know. How do you know, internet? <laughs> because we're special schmoops. <laughs> So, yeah, let me take a look at the uh, the storyline here. So, Jake Gyllenhaal, who we were pretty sure is playing Mysterio yeah. in the sequel, just shared a clip of himself reading a Spider-Man comic with Mysterio on the cover. And he seems to be surprised by something in the pages. We guessed uh, he just realized he's not Spider-Man in the movie, but rather Mysterio. Because I don't know if you know this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tobey Maguire had a bit of a back injury when he was making Spider-Man. Did he? And for Spider-Man 2, there were strong rumors he wasn't going to come back. Oh, God. So they, they actually went as far as looking into who they could cast as his replacement. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal was almost going to play Spider-Man. Oh, this is pretty good. So he has a bit of like history from the Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh, my so God. The, there's cool. a fun little video that he's put up on his Instagram page. Mm-hmm. And it's it's basically just him reading the Amazing Spider-Man comic that has Mysterio <laughs> on the cover. Yeah. And you see Spider-Man reflected in the sort of fishbowl helmet. Yeah. And he's reading it and he's like, uh, well, like, I'm not <laughs> Spider-Man. <well. laughs> Basically, so that's that's what that is. Also, uh, we have our first good look at Spider-Man's black suit from Spider-Man Far From Home because there were some Ooh. leaked set pics a couple of weeks back. And I'm guessing this is like a shield suit. Right. That he gets because it's yeah. all in black. So a stealth uh, suit type thing? Well, the photo's on followingthenerd.com right now as you're that, currently seeing. Yeah, it looks like a stealth suit. With your eyeballs there, Anthony. Uh, yeah. So the idea is because we've seen that Nick Fury's in this movie, uh-huh. and I, I don't think he's in the film. It's not going to be like a Captain Marvel sort of thing. Cameo type it, appearance. He's, he's just sort of there to help Peter with his mission. Because I'm guessing that again, this is all speculative. I'm guessing the plot of Spider-Man: Far From Home, as indicated by the title, is that Peter Parker's on a field trip. It it have to work that way, and like it's a trip around Europe sort of a thing. Yeah. Because we know that they've been filming in Italy. I think they filmed in France and that sort of thing. Mm. So I'm guessing every time he goes to a different place on this this European field trip, there's a mission. There's, there's a mission that he has uh, to sort of complete. Yeah. Like you- Mysterio is causing trouble in Italy, or uh, like I think they they sort of hinted that um, what do you call the water guy, Hydra Man. Oh. Ah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. he's going to be causing trouble in Venice, which makes sense because Venice is nothing but yeah, water yeah. and canals and stuff. So. There's a scene where you see uh, Peter Parker and Nick Fury in a speedboat oh, cool. together. So I'm guessing this is where he gets the black suit from, which is looking suspiciously like the noir suit. And we have a little bit of a, a comparison here on followingnerd.com right now. You can see it oh, nice, from the comics yeah. and TV shows versus how it looks. It's lining it, up it here. It is, it is. It is lining up. So it's weird because the new Sony movies Into the Spider-Verse Spider-Man Noir appears. Who's his voice? Of anyone. Anyone. Pick anyone. The most obscure, random voice actor. Or not even a voice actor, just an actor. Someone you wouldn't think of. Spider-Man Noir is voiced by Nicolas Cage. No. Yes. No. I'm a spider. I'm a spider. (laughs) Spider. I'm a spider. (laughs) No way. What? Yes. Hi. What? (laughs) So, uh, and again, as we were saying at the start of the show, we're hoping to get the trailer for Far From Home uh, this weekend at some point. Originally, it was supposed to be tomorrow, but it's going to be Saturday. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. Nicholas Cage is playing the noir Spider-Man. This is going to be crazy. Uh, Flipping back over to DC, Uh Elseworlds. Dude, I am foaming at the mouth for this. 
Have you seen the pictures? Yeah. So, well, <laughs> are you kidding me? It's following the nerds. All you have to do is go to the website and see them. Uh, the poster looks amazing. It looks very similar to the... Do you remember the Avengers poster? Oh. That came out yeah, for the yeah, first yeah, movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's them um, like, sort of on a destroyed kind of cityscape. And yeah. It's very clear that they've been photoshopped in, like Iron Man with the hand out and stuff. So with this one, uh, you can see... Like, all the sort of promo photos that we've had so far, like, for example, with um, Oliver Queen as the Flash. That and messed stuff. with me, too, so much. It's like, ah, oh, this is so crazy. Yeah. Gotham City, time and world-altering magic, heroes' roles reversed, Batwoman, robots, 90s Flash, and an evil Superman. I'm happy. <laughs> it's Christmas. This is blowing my mind. So the trailer has just gone up uh, this week. So I'm following the nerd.com right now. I'm, I'm mesmerized by this. It's, it's I exciting. haven't felt so excited for a CW show in a very long time. Yeah. This has really bitten me by the bug now. So we've got a batch of new images, uh, which are on followingthenerd.com right now. And uh, we have a little bit of a write-up here on all of them. So first up, the first image is uh, Stephen Amell, which, uh, who plays Oliver Queen. Mm-hmm. It's his wife, Cassandra Jean Amell, as Nora Freeze. Mr. Freeze's wife. Oh my god. And while the image is unremarkable in most ways, we did notice one thing. Uh-huh. Bane's mask from The Dark Knight Rises is on the cabinet next to her. So if you look very, oh, very closely at that picture, god. that's Tom Hardy's mask from The Dark Knight Rises. So, do we think there's more to this? No. Mm-hmm. But as the series, is, the, the event itself is called Elseworlds, we know we're going to see nods to other DC shows and worlds. Yeah, and yeah. this is looking to be one of them now the next image there's an awesome scene of some of our heroes on the rooftop of Gotham City Police Department guess what's on the roof of Gotham City Police Department oh my god the bat signal oh my god the bat signal's on there uh, and you can see that there's it, it looks very Burton-esque it does this Gotham because it it's got does. stone statues in it yeah. again and finally we have a few great shots of Ruby Rose as Batwoman oh, I'm in love I, can't I am wait. absolutely I- in love with this it looks so damn awesome. Now, will she be helping the the group, to, or is she like this shadow? Quite possibly. Mm. This trailer looks absolutely amazing. It all kicks off this weekend. I can't wait. This weekend? This weekend, ah. yeah. Which one? Uh, where did, which, I think uh, it starts with Supergirl. Starts with Supergirl? But um, I'm not too sure. But yes, so there's that. Uh, also, something I want to talk about just before we wrap up here tonight. Uh, we reported on this story a couple of weeks ago, and now it's finally here. Mm-hmm. The Christmas Chronicles. Oh, my God. Kurt Russell as is- Santa Claus. This movie broke my mind. It's amazing. Whenever I watched it. Now, it's this is a Netflix amazing. exclusive. Mm-hmm. Me and Elizabeth sat down to watch it the other night. It's the most bizarre two hours I've ever spent in front of the TV. <laughs> and this is me. Yeah, here, yeah. Like, so that's saying something. It's insane. It's brilliant. it's brilliant. I don't know who this movie's for. Me. <laughs> is, it, is it for kids? Is it for adults? Make sure it's both. so dark in places. There is some dark moments in it. There is some like, dark I, moments. I don't want to give anything away or spoil anything, but if you have Netflix, it's on Netflix you, right now. Yeah. The Christmas Chronicles. Go watch it. It's worth watching just for the fact that Kurt Russell plays Santa. Yes. And he plays it beautifully. That he does. Uh, let's just say there's a, there's a musical number. Oh, that! Oh, yes. And for me, it's kind of up there with the likes of the Blues Brothers. Yeah, because yeah. it comes out of nowhere. There's another thing I liked about it too. There is one of the people in that scene is from The Sopranos. Oh, really? Yeah. So the person. Oh well, look, I can't really give too much away. But there's there's a scene with, with two people that he interacts with, and that's one of the the uh, one of the guys that worked with uh, The Sopranos. He's one of the mafia guys. Uh, oh, that cool. that was really good for me to see because I was like, oh my God, this is really cool because I've noticed uh, a, a few things because I watched The Sopranos. There's a few people I've noticed. I was like, oh my God, I remember you in this episode or you're in this episode. Now, another Soprano has now appeared in uh, this Christmas movie and I was like, oh, this is really, really cool. It's nice to see that they're still going out. They're still like going and meeting with other that guard doing more shows. They yeah. didn't just stop acting. It's like they're all sort of friends yeah, sort of working yeah. together. Yeah, that's really nice. And I like that. I was, I was yeah. that, For me, it was like, oh, that's quite nice. But uh, this was beautiful. The trolls for me, in it, or the, not the trolls, the elves in it for me. The the, the, these little cutesy animated yeah. things that talk in moon speak. 
<laughs> that moon that speak. Refer- Total moon speak. talking like, yeah. and there's even another point where the wee girl goes, I, I can speak. Wait a minute, I'm speaking Elvish, what? Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay, those are clearly in there to uh, get in the Despicable Me crowd. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it hardly makes any sense because like, there are some really uncomfortable scenes in this. Mm-hmm. There's there's a scene very early on that was quite uncomfortable and quite dark uh, that young kids might, you know, might off, upset yeah, them a little bit. It would. But then there's a bit where they've got Santa's bag yes. of, of, of his toys. And it turns out that's a portal to the it, North yeah. Pole and that's where the elves are throwing all the presents into it. And that's why Santa's sack so big. And like, I love the fact that it, it explored the mythology yeah. of Santa Claus and gave us a, a nice little sort of new spin on Even it. Even with the, the sleigh as well, that uh, when you press it, there's a little globe. Or you press it, it's like a vortex, yeah, it's like a, yeah, it's like a time, time vortex. Time but it's designed to look like the Northern Lights. It yeah. looks like Aurora yeah. Borealis. I so love that. Green. And then if you want to go to Paris, you look for the Eiffel Tower yeah. that's done in the Aurora Borealis. So I like little things like that. But there is a scene where uh, the older brother, who kind of looks like the older brother from Stranger Things. Oh my God, I didn't it, think it's, about it's, that. It's yeah. not him, but Isn't it that? looks a lot like him. Where he's got like the same hairstyle and everything. Uh, oh, it might be. I don't know. I didn't care enough to check. But um, <laughs> it might be. There's a really uncomfortable scene where the little girl crawls into the sack. So she's fine. She's in the North Pole. Mm-hmm. The brother, though, gets mugged. Yeah, the, the, by, mo- the mob. By, like, yeah. three guys. And they yeah, take yeah. him to like their, their evil warehouse. Yeah. And he's going to get like, what? Uh, how, what What are they going to do to torture him? I think they were going to. I think they're going to put him in the furnace or something. They're, uh, yeah. they're going to do something like that. Like. And, and it's it's really, really dark. And you're sitting watching this going like, this is supposed to be like a fun, happy Christmas movie. What is happening? Ah, I loved it. Do you know what it reminds me of? It, it kind of reminds me of Happy. Another Netflix show. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's straight up dark. Uh, that, that's where it's like, ah, I'm getting vibes of Happy here. There's certain moments where it's like, this, this is Happy. And if anyone doesn't know what Happy is, go watch it. Go to Netflix, type in Happy, go watch it. Madness. And... Yeah, I was getting vibes from that, but this movie was brilliant. Yeah, no, I I enjoyed it. As I say, there there are certain moments that makes you feel very uncomfortable, but the ending is so heartwarming. Brilliant, it it's was beautiful, the, man. Like it, it actually brought a, a wee bit yeah, of tear to my eye. It was, I was like, ah, that's that's a nice way to end it. That's a nice way, and I love the fact that too, because um, I didn't realize that. Like, I think the people behind Harry Potter had something to do with it, with Home Alone and Harry Potter, the mixture of it. Right was. Uh, the bit with Santa, like how the how he gets down the chimneys, he turns into this magical uh, dust and flies down the chimneys. So there's a kind of that like really magically feel to it as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I like that. And and um, funny enough, there's one thing I, I noticed, and I was like, "Where's Rudolph?" Yeah, well, <laughs> I think they're saving him for the sequel. The better, because I sit and go like, <laughs> "What? What?" See, see, this is what they're going to do. They're going to start their own Santa Claus cinematic universe. So they're oh gonna my give, they're God. gonna give uh, Rudolph his own standalone movie where he's bullied by all the uh, <laughs> yeah. the other reindeer and stuff for having such a weird. Do you know? Nose. Do you know what? I I have this weird thing I do with movies where I, I mix them together. So like after Guardians, after he faded away into nothingness, he became Santa. He became Santa. <laughs> yeah, this is your punishment. Yeah, yeah. Bring I'll, joy to people. Well, I will say this: Mrs. Claus is very easy on the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 And uh, she, she seems to have uh, Santa's jingle balls and a bit of a vice as well. <laughs> Shall we say? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Santa's baubles <laughs> in a vice. Because she seems to be very much the, the matriarch the one, of man. the North Pole. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's a moment in it where he's, uh, he's talking like, if, if you ever talk to Mrs. Claus, just, just miss the Leave part. that bit just, out. Just but, but she knows. Oh, she, knows. she always watches. She knows all. She sees all. <laughs> <laughs> she hears, hears a whisper in his back on I can see. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> but no, it is. It's it's a lot of fun. It's mental. I don't know who it was made for. Um, I didn't send me. <laughs> they, they wanted me uh, to, to I watch think it. it, <laughs> it like um, Kurt Russell fans will get a lot of fun out of it. Yes, uh, it, there's some great lines in it. Like the bit where he goes, "Oh, you're expecting some big fat guy, huh? Well, that's not me." I like, get so angry when yeah. he sees a billboard of like every a fat time, Santa Claus. Every time, <laughs> even the radio part where the the, the police are, let, are going after them, he even goes like, "God, like you know, you eat a couple of things, like, and you never hear the end of it." <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, what do you expect when the entire world offers you milk and cookies? <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> no, the one line I love it is like, uh, "I'm the only guy who can eat a load of milk and cookies." This guy, <laughs> he's like, yeah. he's proud of it. <laughs> I was like. I like it. I like it. 
Oh uh, dear. And oh, what was the bit I was thinking of there? Oh no, it's it's completely gone in my head because again, I'm I'm trying desperately not to spoil this. No, I I, I can't. I'm, but, if no, any more, I will. I loved Kurt Russell's entire. 